So these are all the basic things I carry to go fishing with the rod. This reel, pretty much, I don't carry the line with me. I carry an extra spool full of line and I use between 30 and 50 pound braid. I use Power Pro, which is the best uh, from what I've tested on the rudless reel. Tangles the least and it's pretty expensive stuff. It's around $12 for 150 yards. Uh, so it's not cheap stuff. If you want cheap line, you can get the Trilene, Berkley Trilene XL Smooth Casting. I get 10 pound or less mono. And I, honestly, I prefer mono because it has stretch in the line. If you're new to fishing, the difference in fishing with mono line is that it has a lot of stretch. So when you catch a fish, um, honestly, it, to me, it keeps the tension on the fish better. Braid is more like, you can feel every little nibble. It's very hardcore stuff. The good thing about braid is if you hook your lure into like a stick at the bottom, you can yank it out usually and not lose your lure. Sometimes you actually bend the hook out just to get your lure. And that's where pliers come in. I carry pliers uh, for two things. One is to get the hook out of the fish's mouth if it gets stuck or if you hook him too deep. And another thing is if my hooks get bent, I can just squeeze it and bend it back into shape. I carry a very small pliers with me. You have to use snap swivels uh, with the rodless reel. Not necessarily snap swivels, you can also use regular swivels. Mo most fishermen, the more you fish, the more you like, at least for me, when I was a little kid I used to use snap swivels, but I got away from that and I started just using, you know, where you tie the line directly to your lure. There's tons of different knots you can use. Typically with braid, I found the best knot is just a bunch of regular knots. You can also do a polymer knot, which is really good, but honestly, sometimes I've seen that slip. So I pretty much just tie five or six regular knots with the braid directly to a snap swivel. And this, what the snap swivel does is it enables the ed, end of your line to spin with or sorry like rotate without the line tangling so you have to have that on the rodless reel some type of swivel or else you will it will your line will get super tangled up i guess because the spool is so small it just causes that another thing i'd recommend if for the guys that are you know for all of you that have the rodless reel pro series uh coming soon from the kickstarter is a roll of teflon tape uh, the reel comes with teflon tape on the drag knob already. I just, I'm gonna wrap Teflon tape around all of them, but in case that ever goes bad, the Teflon tape just holds the drag knob in place. Without it, you cannot use the reel. The, the drag knob will slip out of place. Just a minor thing that we found, but the Teflon tape does the job. Holds the drag in place really well. So, <clears throat> other things, uh, fishing reel grease and oil those are an absolute must you don't have to carry them out on your outings but you have to have it because after say you take this to salt water and you gunk it with salt water or dunk it or say you're you know just after a while of fishing that all the oil and uh, stuff comes off you just unscrew these three screws with the allen key that's going to come with the reel and pull it all apart clean it out with water and soap really good, and then put a little bit of oil in all the moving parts. And you can put some of the grease too. Just the grease is great because it kind of holds the oil in place better than the oil. The oil will just kind of slip out everywhere. So that's why I mix those two together. Another thing is a good pocket knife. You want to carry a pocket knife if you're using braided line, just because braided line is, uh, you can't bite it to snap it. Um, you have to have a knife to cut braided line. So just always carry a good little pocket knife. I got this for a dollar from Walmart. <laughs> uh, yeah, other basic stuff before I get into the lures I use with the rodless reel. Uh, if you're a sport fisherman and you're fishing for bass or whatever your target fish is, it's cool to have a scale just to see, you know, how big the fish are you're catching. I'm typically shooting for five pound plus bass. That's like my target 
range of fish that I'm always after. If I catch a three pound plus bass, I'm super happy. But a five pound bass plus is very exciting for me to catch. Also, if you want a fillet fish to, to eat them, I would recommend a good little fillet knife. This is a Rapala fillet knife. These have been around forever. They work super good. I like the small one. They come in different sizes. This is the smallest one. It's great for filleting fish. And finally, some type of bag to carry all your stuff in. I am gonna start selling these with little rodless roll patches on there pretty soon on my website. I was just testing out this product and it, it seems really cool. This is a perfect bag. It's got belt loops. So you just put it on a belt and carry it. I can fit all the fishing gear I need for one outing in this little bag. You can also use like a fanny pack. They sell them in the sporting goods section in like Walmart for like $6 for a fanny pack, which is, will get the job done for sure. So anyways, uh, let's get into the lures and I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and show you what types of lures I recommend for the rodless reel. So, basically, the two main things you gotta keep in mind with the rodless reel is the Pro Series, you can pretty much fish with anything. You can fish with a regular uh, spinning reel or bait casting reel. It's, it uses the weight of the lure to cast the lure. But this one also has a three to one gear ratio, so it retrieves baits very quickly. It retrieves baits about as quickly as a regular fishing reel um, because of the size of the spool in comparison to the gear ratio and everything. So basically if you already know how to fish with a spinning reel or a bait caster or whatever, <clears throat> you know, basic type of fishing reel, this will do the job. I'm going to show you all the lures that it can use and that I typically throw. But you know, the, you can use basically any lure that casts based on the weight and you know, you can reel them in slow like soft plastics or you can reel them in fast like crankbaits and even buzzbaits. Uh, for the Survivor Series, I'll quickly cover. It's the best thing to throw on this is soft plastics. So, uh, you know, it casts just as far as this, the Pro Series, but it reels in with a one to one, no gear ratio advantage. So, this one is great for like worm fishing, it's great for cat fishing, it's great for like, you can throw a rooster tails, which is a small inline spinner, but you have to really reel in very fast, and it's kind of difficult to reel in. Uh, rooster tails with this one. I do throw rooster tails, but it, it will wear you out trying to reel those in on the Survivor Series. So I typically, if I'm going with the Survivor Series, I'll just throw nothing but soft plastics all day. That's all we're gonna cover on the Survivor Series though. Um, as far as the Pro Series goes, the number one lures that I throw on the Pro Series is soft plastics. Uh, and the way I throw my soft plastics Here's two good examples of soft plastics I love. This is the Zoom uh, Trick Worm, and it doesn't say the length of it, but it's probably seven inches or so. It's a really good worm. It's a green pumpkin color. Uh, you can get them in any color, honestly. I just like stuff that looks realistic. This worm is one of my favorites to throw, and this is probably my favorite worm to throw. It's just a baby brush hog by Zoom. They also make a brush hog which is a little bit bigger but uh, the way I hook this is different than uh, there's a few different ways. You can do what's called a Texas rig where if you hook a Texas rig I'll really quickly show you. You just hook the, the hook through the top of the worm and then slide it through and around and then poke, line the hook up with the worm, poke it through the belly, and you can leave the hook embedded inside the, the worm, or you can run it all the way through and have the hook poking out. I like to have it poking out because even though I'll snag more stuff on the bottom, whenever a fish bites this, it's more likely to, to get hooked. And then you just hook your snap swivel on here. That would be weightless. But what I like to throw with the rodless reel is a little bit different than traditional style fishing. Um, I typically throw a weighted 
5 aught hooks and I like them when they have the spring connector to connect to the uh, worm or soft plastic so you just put this deal in here like so and I'll try to do it real quick and you just spin the spring into the soft plastic and that holds it on there forever and then you just take your hook and then line it up and hook it through the worm this actually might be a 4 aught hook I prefer 5 aught but if, this might have been all they had at the store at the time and I'll throw this it's a it's let me see what, if it says what size weight it is it says oh this is a 3 aught hook so it says 3 aught hook but it probably weighs about an 8 ounce maybe a 16th ounce that's typically what I'll throw with the rodless reel all day long I'll pretty much we do all my largemouth bass fishing with this setup. Um, you know, there's numerous types of hooks you can use, but basically just a, a worm hook. And I like the weighted ones. You can also use slip weights with your uh, non-weighted hook. Uh, the way that, that I tie them on, since you're using a snap swivel, I'll either put the the I use an 8th ounce weight or a 16th ounce weight pretty often and I haven't used these in so long I don't even remember I guess this is the 8th ounce I'll put this above the snap swivel the weight and then I'll hook the the hook directly to the snap swivel so you have the the weight can slip up and down above the snap swivel and then this is hooked directly to your lure the reason I don't throw this as much anymore or to your worm the reason I don't throw this setup as much anymore is because I like to switch between spinner baits, uh, crank baits, and back to the this. And in doing this, I have the weight directly on the the hook, so I can just use a snap swivel and switch out lures really quickly. And I carry a little tin, just an Altoids can, with all my different hooks and all my different weights. And I put all my snap swivels in there, my swivels. And I even put spinner baits like uh, rooster tails in there, and then I just throw them in my bag like this, which is pretty cool. This bag actually has a little pocket, so you just stick this in there, and it holds the Altoids can shut so that your hooks don't go flying everywhere. So that's soft plastic. Soft plastics are great for largemouth bass. I'm sure they're great for other fish. So the next type of lure, my favorite other lure probably my favorite lure to throw on the rodless reel is a spinner bait and the particular spinner bait that I like a lot is a three quarter or three three eighth ounce rooster tail basically between if you don't know what spinner baits are a spinner bait just means it has a spinning thing on it this one is an inline the rooster tail is an inline spinner so the spinning blade is on the um, is in line with the lure. This is just another type of spinner bait. <clears throat> this is the most standard kind. Um, this one has two blades. It has like, a, I think that's a Colorado blade and that's a willow blade. Just different types of blades. You can get them in different colors. There's typically gold and silver blades. They all work great. I, I throw a lot of silver to represent shad, but gold is also a really good color to throw. And, you know, what was I going to say about these? Okay, so like one important note, this spinner bait does not have a loop over here. This is where you hook the snap swivel or your line. Um, without it having the loop, like I'll show you what I mean by the loop, this um, little bitty spinner bait has a loop here. So when you hook a snap swivel to a spinner bait, if you don't have that loop, um, every once in a while you're casting, it can slip around and so your spinner bait will be casting like this and really in all janky and it won't catch any fish. So I really like the spinner baits. One thing to look out for in spinner baits is to find ones with the full loop where your line or your snap swivel will go through. That'll hold it in place better. And just rooster tails, you can get them in, this one is a quarter ounce. You can get them in eighth ounce, sixteenth ounce. They make them in every size you can imagine. Uh, but my favorite to throw, like I said, is the three eighth ounce. It just casts super far, reels in super quick. The blade is huge, and I've caught so many bass on this. I've caught catfish on this. 
Um, I've even, I think I caught a carp on this once. And I mean, you can just catch all kinds of fish on rooster tails. That's what's cool about them. If you're not sure what type of fish are in the water you're fishing, you can cover every, you can cover so much ground with this. And yeah, so rooster tails are great, 3 8 ounce. You can get all kinds of different spinner baits. Black spinner baits are good for like when the water's dark. Uh, you know, I like black and blue spinner baits. I like brown and gold spinner baits. Yeah, so that's for spinner baits. So let's cover my other favorite thing to throw on the Rob This Real Pro series is a crankbait. Crankbaits are awesome. They cover tons of ground. Uh, I like orange. Uh, crawfish color uh, shallow diving crankbaits and for those of you that don't know what a crankbait is it's just a, it's it's a lure that imitates a fish and it has a bill on the front of it your lines above the bill so when you reel it in the bill digs down into the water and causes the lure to shake back and forth acting like a fish it has hooks all over it one on the back one on the belly and these lures are cool for covering a lot of ground. You, I, they have different depth crankbaits. So this one is like a probably a five to seven foot depth or maybe even deeper. Let's see, it didn't say on it. This one is a five and a half foot depth crankbait. It's all based on the bill size. So the bigger the bill, the deeper it goes. I fish a lot of shallow creeks that max out to probably five to eight feet deep at the deepest point. Uh, so I throw a lot of three to five foot depth crankbaits, but for like lake fishing, you can get a deeper diver. Uh, this is a white one. It looks like a shad. It's got the dot on there. These are crawfish ones. Here's that concrete one I made. It's a lipless crankbait. It still has the bill though, because the line tie is above the front of the head. So it digs under and does its action. This thing actually caught fish. Um, so those are crankbaits. You can also use another really cool thing to use on the Redless Reel is weedless topwaters. Weedless topwaters are super great for if you're going into um, a place that has tons of moss, tons of cover, tons of sticks in the water, tons of stuff to get snagged up on. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. It's called a, I can't remember right now. I haven't really fished with these in so long. Oh, a scum frog. This is called a scum frog. And this lure is, it looks like a deflated balloon. But I tell you, man, it will catch fish if the fish are very active where you're at. Other places you'll throw this and you just know there's no confidence in this lure. But at certain spots, man, you throw this out there and bass just like explode on it. And the way these are weedless is the hooks come up above the back and like the squishy back kind of pushes up against the hooks causing it to become weedless and when a fish bites it it pushes down and is able to get hooked on those hooks you really with these when a fish bites these you want to wait a, like a second and then yank back really hard and it'll set those hooks the hooks are super thick so you really got to set the crap out of this one uh, this is one from walmart they sell it's like these hooks are a little humongously thick i don't have a whole lot of confidence i like in this lore i like the way it looks but the hooks are so thick that i just don't have tons of confidence with it this is an old mouse one you know you can throw this over structure and stuff and just pop it around reel it in here's a very realistic looking frog i need to bend the hooks i i guess i got snagged on a stick and pulled so like i was saying before about bending the hooks you know you just gotta be careful not to mess up your barb when you're bending them back. But like, see this hook is sort of bending outward, so you can just fix that by squeezing it and pushing it down and getting it back into shape. And here's some big goofy looking frogs that will actually catch big bass. And this is a really cool looking frog. I just picked up at Academy. I cut the things shorter and I bent the hooks down a bit more. Well, actually, I bent them up like someone recommended, but. I don't think that really matters too much. Another thing, if you're fishing for crappie, little jigs work really good. You can catch bass on these too. You can even catch carp on them. You catch pretty much anything on these, but they're really designed for crappie. Uh, just it's basically a little bitty jig. With the, this one has a spinning blade. 
and a little hook and then you put these little grubs on there this is a little white grub i've caught a lot of crappie on this one and these are i don't even haven't used this one much yet and i've caught a lot of crappie on this one with the green chartreuse tail uh, just little jigs or grubs they're good to carry with you in case you suspect there's crappie in the water you're fishing and chunk these out and catch a few of them uh if you're here's another great lure that works on the rubless reel pro series uh, and the survivor series you can use top water poppers my favorite is the pop r uh it says on here this is the pop r lure and you just throw it out and pop it a couple times make it walk the dog make it pop make it make it pop make it stop <laughs> just let it chill you know on the surface of the water and bass will go crazy for this i also love hula poppers this one i actually found when i was fishing i typically throw the smaller hula poppers the smaller hula, hula poppers don't cast very far with the with the the rawless reel but man they definitely produce blow ups However, the small uh, hula popper is hard to set on fish for some reason, but it's a great lure. I love the hula poppers in general. They're awesome top waters. And then also if you're fishing like a lake and there's big trees in there, one of the best things to throw is jigs. I throw jigs with the rodless reel. This is, this is a jig without a trailer. It's basically a, a lead weight with a hook and it has this bristles in front of it to protect it from getting snagged on trees and stuff and then you just hook like a soft plastic on the back like a small crawfish or whatever you have and just throw it let it go to the bottom and just pop it a couple times and bass will blow up on this so that's a good thing for like lake fishing you can also use these in creeks and ponds it doesn't really matter but you know they're really ideal for getting deep down in the water and uh, catching big bass on structure like that. I'm not a huge saltwater fisherman, but I will cover the basics of what I use for saltwater fishing. And then I'll jump into like cat fishing for a second and that'll be pretty much it. So as far as saltwater fishing goes, I'm not a expert saltwater fisherman. I don't live very close to the coast, but all I know is use jigs, use 16th or 8th ounce uh, jig heads, hook them in the the soft plastics and see what you can catch, right? Throw them out. Uh, you can fish the surf and you can fish the bay with them. My favorite thing to throw for salt water is spoons. Uh, you can fish these on the surf. You can chunk them out and reel them in real quick in the surf and catch speckled trout and stuff like that. And I've even caught a black little black tip shark on a spoon, believe it or not. So that, would not, that was before I ever had the rawless reel. I like I said I don't do much saltwater fishing. I plan on doing more in the future uh, to test the rod this reel on it and stuff and see what big fish I can pull out of there. This is one of my favorite lures. I got a bunch of these. I think it's a discontinued bait, but it's basically a jerk bait. And we've caught my brother caught like a four pound speckled trout on this in the surf actually, just throwing it out in the waves and reeling it in real quick. You got a big old speckled trout on that. This is really good for saltwater stuff. It's a, I think it's called a popping cork. You just hook up your leader to, uh, let's see which way this goes. I think it goes this way. You just hook up your line uh, to a hook with a, like a shrimp, dead shrimp, live shrimp, whatever. And then this goes to your uh, <clears throat> fishing reel. And then you just cast this out and you can like pop it and it makes a loud popping noise like a with something that a shrimp would make i guess and this really i've caught a lot of saltwater fish on this setup you can go pick these up at like academy or bass pro or river whatever sporting goods stores are around you they probably got these at walmart too super popular for saltwater fishing and of course when you're saltwater fishing i typically throw like uh, circle hooks there's all kinds of hooks you can throw. Uh, these are actually freshwater hooks, but you could throw these in salt water. It's just little circle hooks. These are great for catfish. Uh, just little circle hooks. You know, this is a size four aught. You can use bigger or smaller, depending on how big the catfish are you're going for. You can use bobbers with the rod this reel. You know, different types of bobbers. That's just for like picking your bait up off the the bottom of the 
or the ground under the water like it just you know it depends on what you're fishing for also it makes a great strike indicator to see when a fish bites uh here are some let's see how these are giant weights but I'll, they're just slip weights and i'll use these for cat fishing i'll tie a leader with a swivel and above the swivel i'll put this uh, uh, big egg sinker and below the egg sinker i'll put a bead what a bead does it'll it'll protect your line from becoming damaged by the weight slamming down on your knot so that it doesn't snap your line so beads are good for that supposedly they also track fish and stuff but i just use them to protect my line uh here's another type of circle hook these are real cheap cat fishing circle hooks you can buy at walmart or wherever and they work pretty good i've never had any issues with them but i do prefer these eagle claw circle hooks over any other kind of hook for cat fishing these are, you can set up <clears throat> sorry about that my battery died on my camera so anyways where we left off was on the circle hooks so like i was saying i recommend these uh, eagle claw circle hooks in about four aught size they work really good you can throw out lines with those and catch catfish. Another type of hook, of course, is the good old treble hook. These are great for catfishing if you're using baits like um, uh, chicken liver, you know, any type of, or worms or any type of bait that can fall off the hook easily. Treble hooks are great for that. The only issue I find with treble hooks is say you throw it out. I mean, every time you reel this in, it's like dragging on the bottom and it's gonna hook all kinds of junk. So that's why I prefer circle hooks. Also, the circle hooks are safer for the fish. If a fish swallows a treble hook, he's probably screwed. And if he swallows a circle hook, he might survive if he gets away. So anyways, that's, that's good about circle hooks. And that's just about it. Um, let me think if I can think of anything else. There's tons of other lures you can throw with this. You gotta remember, it's not a fly reel, so you can't throw super late, or sorry, super light lures and it's you know casting with the rudless reel is based on the weight of the lure so the heavier it weighs the further you can throw it you can get away with throwing little eighth ounce lures or even smaller to be honest but you can't cast them as far so i like pretty good size lure actually full size lures with the rudless reel um, it's got these little holes around the the spool that's so that you can hook your snap swivel to it when you're not using it. And then when you're using it, you pull that open or out of the hole and then you can hook your lure on there and go ahead and go fishing. And then, you know, you can store your extra spools with the snap swivel uh, hooked on to the little holes. Kind of hard to get in those little holes, but they are worth having. And uh, let me see if I can think of anything else you might need. <clears throat> for the this reel. Yeah, like I said, so the main things you're gonna need to get set up are some good lures. There's other options out there. If you go to the sporting goods store, honestly, you could probably catch a fish on every lure they have for sale there if you just work it right. So, uh, you know, if, you don't, if you're new to fishing, go to Google Maps, Google Earth, whatever, um, um, and look for spots in your area that look like you can fish and go try them. Look for spots that look deep and look, you know, not necessarily deep, but look like they hold fish. And just on your day off, go try it out. Just see if you can catch something there. That's how I find all my spots in Houston. Uh, anything else? Yeah, get a bag, you know, uh, or just wait till I have these for sale. You can go pick up a little fanny pack from basically anywhere <laughs> and, you know, if you're carrying stuff like crankbaits in your bag, the issue is that these hooks will like snag uh, inside your bag. So what I do is I put these in my soft plastic bag. So here's my soft plastic lures. When I'm going out fishing, if I want crankbaits, I'll throw them in the, the worm bag and that'll protect the, bar, the hooks from hooking into my actual bag itself. And like I said, I put all my hooks and stuff in a metal tin and throw them in my bag and throw the reel in there. And I throw, basically I got the crankbait and I got my soft plastics in there. And I'll throw a couple tools in there like my uh, pliers 
and uh, a couple things like my Allen key to take apart the reel if I needed to. I usually carry oil on me, but I, you don't have to. I'll carry the Teflon tape on me in case. Carry extra spool of line. And I'll throw a couple of spinners in there. These spinner baits, you can pretty much throw them in there without them snagging anything. So throw a few of those in there. Then I'll throw like, just depending on what I'm fishing for, and I'll throw my rooster tails since they have a treble hook on them i'll throw them in the metal tin and put that back in there uh, sometimes i carry extra line with me just to have you know extra line in case a snag or you get too many tangles or anything like that i also carry survivor series with me when i go just to have that extra stuff and then whatever top waters i'm feeling for the day uh, and that's about it if you have any questions leave them in the comments and I'll answer them. Thanks.